today um, we are going to do some things. We just left Seeker in our in Boho and today we're going to go see the Chocolate Hills and the, what are they called? Little Tar Shears. Yep. So let's go. So we made it to the Chocolate Hills. It was a crazy ride here. It was a like basically a roller coaster, coaster yeah. <laughs> but it was extremely cool looking. Yeah. Um, he gave us a, a ton of interesting facts too, so that was extremely cool. Yeah, but, and we're here at yes. the biggest Chocolate Hill yes, they the have. Biggest. He said there was over a thousand, I don't remember. 1,268 <laughs> of these Chocolate Hills. So that's so insane. And then the biggest one, they put a viewing deck on top of it. Yes, and oh my God. They're, they look so cool. The way that they are chocolate looking, like, or why they call them chocolate hills, is because they basically are like mounds that are brown. And so it's only brown during the summertime, by the way, too, because once it's like rainy season, um, it rains a lot, so the yeah. grass turns green. Yeah. But in the summertime or the dry season, um, it's very dry, so they have like a brown color to them. Hence the name, the Chocolate Hills. Yes. But they are not made of soil. They are actually made of limestone. That's, that's cool. Yeah, that's why they don't have that. any trees on them or anything. Mm. And they don't get overgrown because they're actually made of limestone. And it was through a series of earthquakes that caused them to form, right. which is so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, and now we're just at the at the top. Well, at the Almost viewing. At the top. We're at the viewing point, yeah. but we have to climb to the top to like get to the top of yeah. the hill and see the rest which is 228 I think yeah steps to get all the way up to the top but at Ugh. the bottom of it we see so many dragonflies dragon flies. there's so many yeah it's so cool it's so cool it looks like so mystical it really does yeah, yeah. and thankfully there's no rain so yeah we got lucky yeah we got very fortunate because if it, it was rainy we wouldn't be able to go up there yeah. and it just wouldn't be Enjoyable. Right. So now let's head let's up. Head there. up. <laughs> you ready, Ruby? Yeah. Let's do this. See oh. how long it takes us to get up. <laughs> how much were the the Batu caves? Oh, I did not remember. Was it, it, it was way more than this. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's not bad then, right, Ruby? These are tiny. Those steps were like big. Yeah, those are very steep yeah, steps. Yeah, they're steep. Ruby. Ruby needs a break already. <laughs> Look at the sassy. <laughs> the Sassitude. <laughs> Look at the entrances. 14 steps. It's okay. It's pretty early. <laughs> it's actually really not that bad. Oh wow, look, you can see them already. So cool. so cool. My feet are bigger than the steps. We did it! Woo! Woo! Look, Ruby! Mama! <laughs> wow! Look at that! I can do this. It's so cool! How many can you count? I, I don't know. Now we're just waiting for our car to come pick us back up because there's no parking up here at the top of the hill. But I will say that we've only been here for like 20 minutes and it's like 9 a.m. and it's already getting super, super busy. So make sure if you do come, if you want like time alone to get pictures and everything, come as early as you can. So we just made it to the Tarsier Conservation Center. Um, is that what it is? I think so, yeah. It's like a sanctuary, sanctuary yeah. for Tarsiers. Interesting facts about the Tarsiers. They are the smallest primate in, in the world. world. <laughs> yeah. And their, their eyes are three times bigger than their brain. Yep. 
We have that same issue. They're literally so tiny. They're so tiny. They're like, they grow to max five to six inches. Five to six, yeah. Yeah. But their tails are actually longer than their actual bodies. They grow to like seven to seven eleven, to 11 inches. Yeah. inches. So that's really interesting. It's called like a rat's tail. Mm. And yeah, they're known to be the smallest monkeys out there in the world. That's true. Yeah, but yeah the baby ones are literally the size of your thumbs. Mm -hmm. They can wrap around your thumbs, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you remember anything? else you said? Um, they cannot move their eyes. Yes, you're right. What do they move instead? Their face. Their whole head. Yeah, it can turn 360 like an owl, right? Yeah. They are also nocturnal animals, so they will rest in the day and then go to the sleep. No, they sleep, sleep during in the, the day, day and then they're active at night. And then he also said that uh, they actually unalive themselves all the time because of stress. But he said that uh, they actually uh, take their tail and put it around them so if they get too stressed yeah, if out. they get too stressed out they also can literally have a heart attack if they're scared yeah, because yeah. they're like easily scared like True. you have to be quiet around them they, they could literally drop dead like that's, that's crazy yeah. well let's go find them let's go find them Yeah. <laughs> okay guys, so we made it to the man-made forest here. Students actually planted the mahogany trees here. It's all the bigger trees. After World War II, I think he said they planted them between 1948 and 1956. And he said that before the typhoon um, damaged a lot of it, you couldn't even see the sun like coming through, that there were so many trees here. But there are still so many trees here and it looks so cool. Made it to the Labak Eco Park and there is a really cool zip line here that we're gonna do they said it's uh, 120 meters high and then it's like 520 meters like across and then 480 meters back so we're gonna fly we're not so sure if ruby's gonna do it but she is allowed to she's just a little nervous so it might be just him it might be ruby too so we'll see <laughs> ready to start three two one go
you guys. That was the coolest zip line that I've ever done in my whole life. I did not expect that. <laughs> now we get to go back. Amazing. Very cool. Um, I didn't do it obviously. Ruby didn't want to do it either, which is okay. But we've now come to a floating restaurant for lunch, which would be super cool. And we're all hungry, so yum. We're on a river cruise. We get a uh, lunch on the river cruise. It's included in our tour. And it comes with a buffet. We got a warm salad because we're vegetarian. <laughs> And right after, good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the hall and welcome aboard here at Rio Verde Floating Restaurant. By the way, my name is Sam and I'll be your onboard entertainer. So uh, just sit back, relax, enjoy the show, enjoy your lunch while we are cruising. Thank you very much. Welcome to the hall, the land of kings. This is the land of the golden sun This is the home of the golden man Wishing you happy coming To our beloved Philippines This is for our right home Welcome visitors Welcome to the home Welcome to our dear native land this is the we just finished the floating restaurant. Um, and it was incredible. It was extremely cool, yeah. There was live music the whole time, so it was really cool. Filipinos really know how to sing. Like, man, his yeah, voice he was, was so, so good. beautiful. And he kept going the whole time. Yeah, he did. It was a, I don't know how long it was, but it was a pretty long It was like an hour, was, maybe. 45 was, minutes, an hour. Yeah, I was not expecting that. That was so oh, cool. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. And it was included in the price for the tour. Yeah, yeah. But if you were to do it just separately, it's called Rio Verde Floating Restaurant. And it was only $15 per person for yeah. the whole buffet and everything. Yeah, it was definitely worth worth every penny for sure. Yes. This part alone was really cool. Yeah, this tour has been so fun. I know, it's been amazing, yeah. We've done so many different things too. Yeah, we did not expect this. Yeah. Boho is Boho's, really yeah. bad. It's, it's definitely very cool. cool. We're not even done yet. Yeah. I think we got a couple more things to do. Yeah. We're going to go find our driver now. Yes. And then uh, we're going to take you to the next spot. Who is it? Barney! Barney! <laughs> We have just come to a, a butterfly place. Because you have so many oh, fish wow. <laughs> Look how pretty they are. Stop! <laughs> how cute! Really, look. You want also baby girl? You want to hold, hold it? it? You want to hold? This doesn't even look real. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at oh. that! They're holding a butterfly. Oh, so cool. It's so cool. So cool. So big. She's so pretty. Oh. Look, these are caterpillars. Okay, these one are called caterpillars or the larvae of the butterflies. And it is the second stage in their life cycle before they become a pupa. Oh. After this stage, they will turn into this one. Pupa that? or the chrysalis of the butterflies. And after 16 to 21 days, the, the butterfly will come out. To its pupa. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is the biggest, the biggest butterfly in the Philippines. Wow. It is called as the so Troides Magellanus or the bird wing butterfly. Bird, bird wing butterfly, wow. Uh, this one is Situsha Biblace or Indian lace wing. We just got out of the church here. Um, it was a really, really big church. The uh, Spanish built it, 
and um, the trademark of like their churches is like they build them in like the shape of a cross. Um, the inside was really cool. The ceiling was like painted and there was also like concave so that way the uh, like back in the day they didn't have like microphones or like surround system and stuff like that so the it was built like that so that the voice would travel. He said that it was the uh, the second biggest church here in the Philippines which is really cool. We made it to the blood pack shrine but it was basically uh, the Filipinos and the Spanish came together came up with a uh, treaty a peace treaty and um, each of them like cut their wrist and then bled into a cup and drank it. He said that this was a, a blood pack that happened 15 years after the discovery of the Philippines and it was right here in Bohol. So that's extremely cool. So we made it back to our place and apparently there's a uh, 15 hour power interruption that's happening currently. It started at 4 a.m. and it's going until 7 p.m. because of the um, the typhoon that came through in December. Mm -hmm. Today, specifically, is the day that they're doing a big repair because when the typhoon happened here in Bohol, they put up these like emergency electrical towers to be able to have electricity because they went without electricity for two whole months. That's sad. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. And so they worked really hard to put these emergency towers up and now has come time to do the actual repair so they can have normal electricity. Mm -hmm. So we just don't have power. Yeah. <laughs> but so for the tour, it was oh. so amazing. The tour today was so cool. We definitely think it's a must do if you come to Boho. Like yeah. take a countryside tour. We'll leave the information down below. Yes. You should definitely go with the um, the Island Trek people that we used um, because they were really great. The yes. guide that we had was super knowledgeable about awesome. everything. Thing. Yeah. He told us so much and he was very efficient like it was just a great day Yeah, we didn't really know exactly what to expect today, um, but it definitely Completely exceeded our expectations for sure. Yeah, each thing we did was way cooler than we could have imagined it being so that was really cool Yeah, we had a lot of fun, but now that we're back home I think we're gonna go probably do what everyone in Boho is doing right now <laughs> and let's go <laughs> and go to a mall Yes, because they have generators yeah. there. We apparently I don't think we have a generator here yeah, so. We must not. so we're gonna go hang out at the mall until we get power back. We're gonna and go steal yeah. that AC <laughs> We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Bye! Bye.